So Gavin's the man. <clears throat> so we're not enough for him. Let's fire it up. This is Jason from Star. Well, I can't. I can't see the room now. You can't. Uh, the camera's not. I'm looking straight at a, a water bottle, though. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to unless you stop sharing. Uh, unless you stop sharing your screen, I'm not going to be able to show you the room. So as soon as you as soon as you stop sharing your screen, you'll be able to see everybody. I see. Um, let me just try. Stop sharing. Just pause. Stop share. Oh, I see. Okay, there. Okay, so now I see you. You should see us. All right. So that's this is Gavin, our chair. And Ron is in the corner there. Yes. Okay. We also have a few people members coming up today. Okay. Jason, can we get an introduction, just kind of who you are? Oh, sure. Yes, I'm Jason Day. I'm the, um, the owner and manager of Starwind Turbines. And I've, um, I'm uh, doing the permitting and I, the proposal to David and Peggy Howergan to build their small wind farm. <clears throat> And the small wind farm is a contract um, in the Vermont Standard Offer Program uh, that uh, David and Peggy Hogan won. Um, so we're now in the process of, of, of obtaining a, a certificate of public good. Can you see the can you see the um, the layout of the wind site here? Yep. Yes. Is it on? Okay, so it's the yellow dots are the um, the turbines. Uh, they come up from Menard Road. They're at the top of this ridge here. And can you see my uh, can you see my cursor at all? Yep. Yeah. Um, okay, good. I can use that as a pointer. Um, so basically, it's it's uh, it's 150 kilowatts total. Uh, there's six turbines and 25 kilowatt turbines each, and um, the um, the big map. Uh, this is a, where they lay. You can see Fairfield Pond here in the uh, to the corner here to the northeast. Uh, town uh, center is not quite on the map. Uh, you can see the properties around uh, those this site. There's a half a dozen properties, um, quite a uh, quite a bit of distance away. Um, we did our 45-day notice, um, and we um, presented, um, we did uh, a sound analysis. Uh, this is the, uh, the shadow analysis from the turbines. This basically tells you uh, the yellow area would not be permitted, uh, and the, um, the shadow is too faint in green and blue. So this basically uh, shows that uh, there's no, we're not going to put any shadow through anybody's window. Um, the, uh, uh, say so the sound analysis uh, area map, sound map uh, looks like this. 
Hmm. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so basically, there's the, can you see that okay? Yes. No. Okay, so that's that's the sound analysis for the turbines combined. These are the pink dots are the adjoining houses that are um, that are, would even be affected. The uh, the Vermont um, ordinance uh, is called Rule Five Out Seven uh, Vermont Sound Ordinance, and it, it prohibits uh, over forty two. Uh, DBA of sound 100 feet outside of residence and the 42 line if you look over here on the legend is the yellow uh, is the yellow line so anything inside of any house inside that yellow line we would have we would uh, be in conflict with the rule uh, so you can see that the, the white line there is 30 decibels they require us to, to ship 30 decibels you can see all these trees um, around the neighborhood. Um, you know, a tree you know makes 50 to 60 decibels of sound. So the the turbines are much quieter than the trees. So anyway, we pass uh, the uh, the sound ordinance uh, by a, a very large margin. Um, let's see what else I got here. Uh, this is the, what the turbines look. This is the data sheet of the turbines. This is the, these are two turbines over on another dairy farm in Addison. Um, we would probably uh, they, would, they would look like this. I think David and Peggy are are, are are opting for white. I think white would be the best camo, uh, reduced visual impact against the light sky or cloudy sky. And. Um, <clears throat> So you know, these turbines are not large turbines. They're, they're considered small turbines or medium size. It's a small wind category, although I would consider these turbines to be medium size. But we're in the small wind um, uh, technology category of the standard offer. Which, and the definition of small wind category is under, um, under 100 kilowatts and under 150 feet. So we're 137 feet to the top of the blade, and each turbine is um, <clears throat> uh, 25 kilowatt. This is a, this is a comparison of a large of a large turbine, for example, that you might find on top of uh, Georgia Mountain, and this would be the size of uh, the Star 72 that we would build up at the on, on the Howergans uh, Ridge there. Um, 72 signifies the diameter in feet. And uh, let's see, what else can I show? Uh, this is all in the 45 day notice that you got. We did some, we did some wetland and now there are no wetlands on top of the, um, the site. They already your uh, dairy grazing field up here. And uh, so there's no uh, impact of forestry and there's no wetlands, so we're pretty clean on that. Um, so the other thing that has come up me has been um, visual analysis. We've been going through taking a lot of photos and, and um, comparison or, or trying to show the neighbors what these turbines would look like from a distance. In most cases, you can't um, see the turbines. Um, um, uh, for example, you know some some parts of the uh, along Fairfield Pond, for example, the turbines would be. You see my arrow? Yeah. And you can't see. Here's David. They they would be hidden by the tree line. The ridge. You can't even see the top of the ridge. They would be over here. Um, other parts, uh, the, uh, okay, this is, this is a, a photo analysis I did for, um, to show what large wind turbines you can see, and, uh, what large, that's the, the Howard can go there, but the, what our turbines look like are like this. This is the difference between 
a large wind turbine and our star 72. That whole white line is pointing to the turbines. You really have to blow up. David, it's a little hard. It's a little hard to see those. Can you pull up the large wind turbine for us full screen and then show us all? Does that help? I think so. Okay. We also actually have a question for just if you don't mind. Hi, Jason. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, at, at the regional planning meeting, you um, said that you didn't really use as many pixels as you should have. You kind of apologize for that. So are these an increased number of pixels for... Who am I talking to? Oh, Penny Doobie. Penny Doobie. Oh, yeah. You, uh, yeah, I, you sent me a photo and... Um, it was it was a very large photo, so um, yeah, I did it improve the pixel quality. As you can see, uh, I'd have to blow this up here to show you what these turbines look like. Do you see that now? Pull it down. There it is. Can you see that? That's yeah, I have to really I really have to blow it up a lot for you to see the tops of the blades. In a lot of cases, you won't see the swept area. But is this particular, Can you see it? is that one, is that photo um, as many pixels as you would normally do for a professional photo? That's what I'm asking. Yeah, this is, this is, this is very high, high resolution photo, yes. Okay, that's what I want This is, this is almost, this photo is eight, almost eight, over 8,000 feet away. Oh, okay. Okay, so you can't, you can't get much better on this than digital. I mean, not, I mean, I suppose. Isn't that good enough? Yeah, no, I just wondered because you had mentioned. I mean, at the I, would, I would think that this would show the difference between um, the large and the small wind turbines. Or well, you get an idea of what it looks like um, and what it would look like. I believe this should be fair. Now, the Northwest Regional Planning Commission has asked me to float a balloon, and I'm, I'm going to float a balloon and take a picture of it. You probably won't see the balloon. <laughs> I, I have um, a question. Yeah, no problem. Go ahead. I got another question for you. <clears throat> yes. Who's talking? Greg Pierce. I'm wondering if it would be possible to schedule a walk around uh, a foot tour of the location so we could actually walk on the spot that each turbine is located to be located? Uh, sure. I, I suppose. I don't, I, um, I don't see why not. Would you be there to guide the tour? Yeah, I could be. And, uh, and David, David could be there too. Well, and what would, what would be the purpose of that? So we can see the actual site. Become familiar with it. Oh, I see. Okay. Who's, I'm sorry, who's that? I can't think who's asking the question. Greg Pierce. Okay. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, or I could. Um, I, don't, I don't see a problem with that. The, the site is being um, inspected. People that have been up there have been myself, uh, of course. Um, David Harrigan and my um, my PE engineer who does the uh, the environmental analysis and the uh, the drainage plan, the site planning. Uh, ANR has been up there to review, uh, looking for any any types of uh, uh, um, wildlife or land, etc. And we pretty much uh, cleared us. Um, the um, um, I don't know what I don't know what you would be looking for, but certainly um, we can't um, from where we can see on the ground. We can't see Fairfield Pond from the ground. You'd have to get up in the air in order to see. It. Um, although I have been up there since the leaves have fallen, so that I might be able to see more. It's hard to say. So. When, uh, when would you want to do this? As soon as possible. 
before the snow comes okay. to any significant depth. I see. Uh, well, maybe this weekend. Okay, by me. I know when's it, when's it going to snow? Wednesday. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, how about tomorrow? Tomorrow? Yeah. Sure. I mean, um, if we want to get up there before it snows, David, if David's there, what, is, what do you think, David? It would be my pleasure. Okay. Uh, I, I'd have to check, but um, can I get up there tomorrow? Um, David, won't you come up? There? Yeah, I mean, um, if it'll, do some, if it'll do some good, if it'll do some good. Midday? Say again? Midday? Uh, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a three and a half hour drive for me. But yeah, it would have to be midday. David buying lunch? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You know, I don't think, I, 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 I have things, I have things to do at the shop, so. It might be more like one o'clock or two o'clock because I have, you know, I have things I have to go over with uh, my people at the shop, before, and then I can get on the road. Two, yeah, two o'clock. Sure. Two o'clock. Yeah, it would be so, two o'clock. Two o'clock first. Oh, Did he meet you where the regular travel way ends? Sure. Yeah. Is that good. Yeah, by the old dairy bag there. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you all just meant so you all can live with that time period. Two o'clock. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Good enough. Carry on. Okay. So what uh, did I answer the question, Penny? Did I answer the question about the pixels? Yeah, I just wanted to see if the pixels were different. I mean, this is the yeah. this is the best this is the best camera I have. Okay, and I've never, I've never had any complaints from from the public service department or the public utility commission about the, the quality of these photos. Yeah, I was only bringing up that you had mentioned at the regional plan planning meeting that you were apologizing that you didn't have a sharp. Well, yeah, I didn't, okay. I didn't take, I didn't take the photo uh, that you sent me. And, and and I've got better results on these one with this with this camera. Good. I don't know exactly how many pixels your camera has. Okay. Uh, I have to look at what mine has. I'm not really sure, but I have had better luck. Um, of course, I zoomed in more on this photo. You sent me a very wide, um, broad, uh, broad photo. Uh, so maybe I, maybe that's why I I feel I have better success with this. Okay. So I mean, some of the other photos uh, we have, uh, we took around the area. Um, the reason, I, that's, that's David there, and, and he's holding that stick there so we can we can do a proper uh, registration of the size of the turbine. You can't see his hill. Well, you can see the silhouette of his hill. The turbines would go right there. So I didn't even bother to drop him in because you wouldn't see them through the camo. Um, this is, uh, oh, we did that one already. Um, let's see. Here's another photo on this on the road across on the other, on the east side of Fairfield Pond. Just saying, there's the ridge. Even with the leaves down, and there's, we're about 30%, we're mostly down. You're not going to see the turbine through the tree trunks. It's, 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 um, it's not, uh, most of the road was like that. Here's, here's another point on um, Mackenzie Road. The same thing. The tree line really, really covers the ridge pretty much. A, a lot of it. There's very, there's a few spots where you can see. Um, let's see. This is the shot from the, uh, you called your park on uh, Fairfield Park. So the turbines are over here. On the left, you can't see over the ridge or through the trees. You can't see the Howard and Ridge. Um, here's um, 
Uh, here's here's a requested photo. You had asked me to take it to the intersection of North Quad Roads, and I put uh, the size of the turbines in there. You might see two of them. The other two you would see there be over the hill. Uh, you had also asked for another photo. Um, <clears throat> let's see if I can find it. Yeah, it was this one. Um, I can't remember the roads, but the I couldn't. I couldn't place the tur. Not sure if I could place the turbines for that one. I'll have I'll have all of this put together when we submit the CPG. Um, I'm gonna I gotta have to go back up there now. That I think that all the leaves are down, and I can I can retake all of the photos again. And I have a balloon, and I will take a picture of the balloon. Um, let's see. This is, oh, this penny is the original photo you sent me. And as you can see, this is what, you're, what we're referring to. If I zoom in, yeah, I didn't do too bad. You know, it, it's just that it's so far away that they're, they're the, they're, there are the, um, the turbines, about what they would look like over the ridge. Now, I had to paint them black because if I painted them a light gray or camouflage, I mean, you would hardly see them at all. Maybe okay. that's an option. They're going to be painted and white, right? Can, they're going to be painted white, right? Were, in this photo, I have to paint the blades black in order, to, in order to see them so you can get an idea. But maybe one of the mitigations we might propose is come up with a light gray color um, against that hillside and the, the blend in that. Can you blow it up even more? You want me to blow it up more? Yes. Like that? Yes. That's about, <coughs> yeah, that's about the best I can do. Does that, uh, does that help you in any way? So, yeah, sure. so, so is, Jason, okay, let me go on to the other phone. Did you take then you go on to the other pose. Yes. Did you take any pictures from the water? Um, no, I, I don't have a boat. If you, if you take me on the boat, I will. But I don't, I don't have a way to get on the water. I can really only drive on the public road. Um, I, would, I did take a picture. I take that back. Yes. Here's one with David on the water. And we couldn't. The okay. Are over here so, on the Jason. Jason, on, Oct yes. on October yes. on October sixth, you sent a you have a picture from the water that shows the turbines. It, I'm not I'm not asking for it right now, but <coughs> it shows the turbines from the water. You know. I say. And you know, uh, that, that, uh, you don't need it right now. I'm just saying it's really important to show the turbines from the water for the people that live on the pond. And it, it who's, who's, talk, who's talking? This, this is Brian Doobie. And it was on, it just, it's in your, somewhere in your emails. But you know, you, it depends, okay, it depends on where on the water. If you're, if you're close to the east, to the east shore. I know, you look at, not, Jason, Jason, I, I live on the pond. He can't hear no, he can't I, see you. I'm just, I'm just saying, it was on October 6th, Jason. So you have it, you don't need it right now. I'm giving you a courtesy heads up. Okay. It would be a good, what? Let me, let me explain, okay? It makes a difference how high up, uh, Mackenzie Road is, is higher up. But if you're on the water, and David here is not quite on the water because it goes down another eight, six or eight feet, okay? I'm gonna send you back your photo. I'm gonna send you back your photo, Jason. And you can you can see what okay, I'm talking about. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I finish talking, please? Yeah. Can I finish what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So what I'm saying, if you're on the water, I mean, it, the picture depends on whether you can see the turbines where on the water. If you're, if you're close to the west shore or close to the east shore. If you're close to the east shore, you can't see over the trees. If you're in the middle of the pond, you probably can't see the turbines in here. If you're on the west shore, now, David is standing eight feet above the water, and you cannot see his ridge. His ridge is right there, but you can't see it. Therefore, you won't see the turbines. Okay, so... Okay, and I'll feel... I'll, but can I finish what I'm saying, please? And then I'll tell you what I've done. Okay, so then 
what I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to float a, a balloon there just to be sure, just so everybody can see. And I'll take this photo again. You're amazing. And uh, okay, now I'm done. What's the eight feet you're talking about? Wow. Now, now, I'm eight feet. Brian, did you have a question? Nope. I'm, I'm just trying to give you advice. I'm just trying, I'm saying, and I just sent you the email. You, so we live on the pond. So there, you can see, you will be able to see the turbines from the water. And I think you should have a photo that shows that. It depends, it depends where or what part of the pond. Not every place on Fairfield Pond you can see the turbines. You can. I, I'm not. I'm not. I know that. I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing. I'm trying okay, to. So, I'm trying to give you advice, but I'm done. Thank you. He wasn't debating with your comments. So. Is there any other questions from this gentleman? Does anybody got any? You want to ask? No. Nope. <laughs> So what is, does this go through this, this does go through the select board sometime, right, for a vote? Didn't we do it with the, uh, the ones over on Rocky Ridge or whatever? <clears throat> I think that's a little different, I'm not sure. Uh, your, your, next, your next step is to get a CPG, so, right? Right, that's so what we're trying to do yeah. right now. And then it goes through different steps, I understand that. But if I recall that last time, the board had to take a vote on whether they supported it or didn't. Maybe it doesn't make any difference legally. I'm not sure. Okay. I just wondered how this proceeded. Okay, can I, can I explain? Sure. We're going, we're going to put together a, um, a photo analysis and a photo map on all the photos I've taken. I've taken maybe 20 or 30 photos so far. You've seen some of them. And I'm gonna come back and now that all the leaves are down, I'm gonna retake all the photos. And I'm going to float a little, a black balloon and take a photo of that. And I'll take some photos along the water's edge. Okay. Unless somebody wants to give me a vote. So, and then we, we're going to submit um, the final CPG, which is a more detailed version of the 45 day notice that you've given, that, that we've given you. Um, and, um, if uh, if you want to give me, um, now I, I have some other things I have to do for the um, Northwest Regional Planning Commission, some other questions. Um, so we put it all together, we submit it with uh, site plans, uh, with um, the analysis of the wetlands and the, and the wildlife analysis, all the impact studies, we, with including visual, sound, shadow, uh, we do a um, um, uh, um, anything that the historical preservation has asked us if, and farm um, uh, Department of Agriculture, they haven't had any questions. So we, we respond to everybody's questions, we put it into the permit, and then you all have 30 days to make final comments, I guess, et cetera, and then the PUC will make a decision. Is that, that make sense? Well, at least you know the sequence, so. Yeah, that's basically it. You, 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 you put out a 45 day notice, and, and we're going on like, we're gonna be going on like 90 days by looking at it. And that, the purpose of that is to talk to everybody and get out any concerns and answer any questions like this. Um, and then, um, <clears throat> and then you put out your final, form of the of the CPG which is a, you have 30 days everybody has 30 days to make final comment and um, so um, you know I don't know what else to say we'll find out what to, what do you think I guess we go on top of, uh, of the hill tomorrow and see if you have any other concerns So, do you have any other questions, guys, or audience people? I guess we're set at this point. Unless there's something else you want to add. Um. No, I'm here to answer your questions. Yeah. 
Jason, Jason, Dave, why don't you give me, um, this is Kathy speaking, Kathy Ainsworth, why don't you email me that timeline you just described tomorrow and I'll forward that on to folks. Um, just okay. a very, very okay. brief, su very brief summary. So they know, I, I mean, we don't have, I think the deadline, um, they, they're granting us a, a three months extension yeah. So that we can okay. do the balloon and the and the falling of the leaves thing. Okay. So, so we can do the photo analysis. Yeah. So just whatever um, estimated dates you have specifically at this yeah. time, that would be helpful. And then I think we'll, I'll be so. Okay. Thank you. You can do that. Okay. We'll do. Okay. David, you got anything? I think we're good. I think we're good. Thanks, Jason, for being here. Okay. Fanny, you got a question? I, I oh, wait, hold on. I've got some, I've got some, some information that I put together that I'd like to share, but I don't know if we need Jason here to share. It's mostly about um, the Fairfield Town Plan, and I pulled out all the language about um, about aesthetics and scenic resources, and how the town really works hard, has worked hard on their town plan to preserve the town, and I just pretty much. Highlighted all the all the statements from the town plan and the regional plan about aesthetics. So I could just share that. What, may, I, may I ask what is the town plan about well, uh, like Fairfield Pond? Well, like on page 64 of the Fairfield Town Plan, it says Fairfield Pond land development in proximity to Fairfield Pond must be carefully controlled to protect scenic beauty. So the, okay. so the town has I, the town has um, identified Fairfield Pond as a special place that needs to be you know preserved for scenic beauty recreation. So that's just I, and I know that's different people have a okay. different opinion about may scenic I, beauty. But. May I ask a question about that? I would like to ask a question about. That. Sure. What what is the definition of proximity? Melissa, do you have that and knowledge in your uh, zone? Uh, no. No. Uh, Are we talking about a uh, peak in the in the in the zone? In in the uh, hey, we have a zone there, a pond zone. It, or is it properties adjoining that? Or is it properties in the zone? Um, how what is pro how do you define proximity? Well, visual. You can see it. That's. I mean, that, that would mean something to me. Something like you can see a windmill, you can yeah, see but, a house, but you're, you can see a sugar house. Well, I can see, you can see I mean, well, it's got to be, I can see those mountains yeah. right in the distance. They're 30, yeah, 40, 40 miles away. We got enough. Yeah. Got yeah. 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 So, so on, before this gets out of hand, we're going to thank you, Jason, for mm -hmm. presenting. Penny, if you have some stuff you want to share with us, yeah. that's fine, but that's, yeah. The intent of this is to share a little bit of information, so we all get everybody on board. Anybody that wants to go visit the site tomorrow at 2 o'clock can meet Jason and Dave up there. Right? It'll be my pleasure. The more let's, the merrier. Come let's on up. Do that. And if people have questions, the proper way at this point would be su submit them to Jason and David and watch for the next step in the process. This is not the forum to get into a heated argument with your neighbors. Uh -huh. And the town plan is posted on the, the Fairfield website if anybody wants to look at it more carefully. Okay. Well, thank you, Jason, Thanks, for presenting Jason. that. Dave? All right, thank you. You're welcome. And so we'll be, obviously, we'll be discussing things more later on, I'm sure. Yep. And do you want to come up, Penny, and just bring yeah, your just materials just this. to show so people know what you were referring yeah, to? Yeah, so I'll just. I just made a copy for each of you guys, and it's mostly the, and I, I wasn't feeling like it was heated, maybe I was No, 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 but I, 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 I could see somebody getting excited. No, but, um, yeah, so then, you know, like this one even says, well, these are, these are all from the Fairfield Town Plan. I just pulled them out and highlighted them so that people could see, you know, the desire of the, the planners to protect the scenic beauty of our town. Thank you. And it would be good, Melissa, to look in to where where in this process we have yeah, any time. we're we're gonna be asked by regional planning or the public CPE there, C B G, whatever it is, 
our input, so we should be prepared at that point to make a decision or have a comment. But up until Does that any point, of this power get used in Vermont? I should imagine it's that right there in the neighborhood. And most of them goes out of state. That's why I was wondering whether this one was a stay in state power. I don't know how they would direct it. Uh, yeah. But I, I would like to think maybe you know, some local benefits are certainly going to bring a little income to the community. Or power. Mm -hmm. I said or power. Well, you know, I know. mean, you know, we, we, we thought we were doing something good here. Uh, yeah. You know, everybody's, you know, got their different points of view, but uh, I guess they're meeting from all around the globe to try to turn things around in this world. And, Thought maybe this could help. Where will you physically connect to the uh, local distribution system? Transmission system? It would be right, uh, right there in St. Rocks, I believe. Yeah, and then into Sheldon. Yeah, because in St. Rocks, doesn't uh, Green Mountain Power end? You're <coughs> in that substation. Yeah, I think they're both the there. Ball. Yeah. Will you have to string something more? No, no, I mean, that's the thing about this site. I mean, it's just, it's already open, we're not cutting trees, there's no wetland. I mean, you know, people talk about solar panels, we lose our field, you know. We can still graze it, we can still hay it, we're just going to put it where the ledges, they cannot, you know, grow anything anyway. And on the flip side, they're really not standing out all gummy all over the place. Yeah, if we go out on the ball on the boat, we look hard enough. But on the right day, you can probably see them. But there's not many lights on them, you're not going to see them at night, you know. Uh, most of the time, I don't think anybody's going to even notice them. Uh, this project already has been at least preliminarily approved by the zoning board, like a year ago? When right. you first started it, maybe? Right. And I, and I don't know if it comes with a vote on a select board or not. Probably should. Uh, I, I don't know what the rules are on that. I mean, I'd like to think it would be supported. Uh, you know, this town doesn't have a lot of industry, uh, uh, and I think this is a wonderful site for this. I mean, the power line, like you said, we don't have to do anything; it's already there. Well, I'm wondering. Uh, you've got a line that goes up along the Nard Road, right? No, no, it comes in. Uh, it comes up just to my house, and the rest comes over from the Rounds Road. It goes right over this hill where we're about the turbines. And you've talked to somebody about the grading of that line for the oh, amount yeah. of load you're going to put in? Oh, yeah. They say it's all fine? Yeah, oh, yeah. they're ready to take the power. Okay. We've got a contract to sell the power to, to uh, well, it was, uh, uh, oh, it's about, it's about it's now. now. Yes, it's about yeah. yeah. Okay, is there any more discussion on this before we move on to our regular meeting? We're good, huh? Okay, well, you don't want to. Yeah, if you, if you want to get there, one, get a head start, it is a bit of a hike, you know. More than welcome to, you know, get up there a few minutes ahead. I just know well, Jason had a long road ahead of him to get up here, so I figured we'd set it back to for Jason. There may be others that want to go beside Bring them with you, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anybody's got any concerns, we'd like to address them. Okay, thanks, Dave. Very welcome. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Julie, I guess you're next on the docket. Thank you, Penny. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. You're welcome Thanks to stay for, for the rest of the meeting. Thank you. That's funny, everybody. Yeah. We should make some calls. Wait till the end for that stuff. I'll wait until the
wanted to give you an update on some of the projects. They're all going. Um, uh, fence is in the playground. The playground equipment is there. Um, pizza oven is there. Um, signage we've done a little bit. We'll do more in the spring. And west and renovation is is complete. Um, and why I'm coming back to you with this is that there were some things that we haven't budgeted for that were um, obvious when when the contractors did the bid. Um, and I'm wondering if you might consider covering these extra expenses with ARPA funds or not. Um, it had to do with the structure um, and how it had been maintained over time, plus that it was, you know, there were some brick walls that we didn't know were there. There was, um, yeah, windows that were in worse repair than we thought, um, ceiling that had collapsed and wasn't properly um, supported. So those kinds of things that we didn't anticipate. Well, <clears throat> you don't have to decide, and I can give you. So what does it all add up to? I'm just thinking of the money we put out there already. Yep, you gave thirty-one thousand yeah. for this project. Um, right, and I'm thinking of some of the other stuff we've added to the yeah. community center too. Yes, yeah. So I think we've dumped quite a pile of money. Into oh, this. you have. And sure. this, when this was originally sold, as not this project, right? But that being taken over, not sold. This is supposed to be a no cost new town deal. It was right minutes back then. I was on the school board. Yeah. And the group, uh, the group from East Fairfield, approached us. Didn't want to selling it. They were going to take it over and run it as a nonprofit, at no cost to the town. That's right in those minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, but so I guess now the price, you know, it's going up. Yeah. And I understand you're going to have repairs. Uh, you keep the building for another thirty years, you're going to have more repairs on. Mm -hmm. Just how much are we going to keep putting into that? People? That's all I want to ask. Yeah. I guess from my perspective, it is a town structure. Right. Um, because it's, well, because that was a deal at the time when it was accepted Correct. that they would take it over. Right. And how many groups have been through there? I mean, is it still the same original community center group that's running it and operating it now? Is there actually there is an original board member still on the board. Board. She hasn't been on the whole time, but yeah. she's um, been on quite a while. You're talking uh, Michelle. 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 So yeah. pretty close from the get go. Not well, maybe. Um, yeah, I don't know, because this is the yeah. my first stint the, on the board. Right. The main bunch, pretty well gone. Yes. Pretty well. Yeah, exactly. or they're still in the community, but they're right. not. Yeah. But it's the same sort of crew. Right. So. Yes, yeah, yeah, and I don't think the mission has changed. Okay. Um, but I guess from my perspective, it's a town property, and if it reverts back to the town... Um, She's a good salesman. The, the, you know, it's in, if, if it's in poor shape, it doesn't have any value to you. Right. If it's it's like some of them, you fix them or you tear them down. Right. How, it costs money after a while if you don't yep. have use of it. Yep. How does your budget look? Do you, For this? Or just in general? In general. Um, not bad. We continue to write grants, you know, for different programs or different even, um, We got a food bank grant, grant um, that can contribute to this, but it takes away from what the original the intention the grant <coughs> yeah. was for um, yep. equipment and fixtures and to do more with the kitchen. Um, so I, I guess my perspective was, you know, it's a town building and it benefits all of us in the town if it's in good repair. So. Do you see a lot of other repairs needed in the next five now, years? Not, not that I can see. We've painted it. We do have a grant to do some roof repairs. Um, yeah, not, not that I can see. We did the brick, repointed the brick. You know, we're getting so that it sh should be in pretty good shape. Like Catching up to 20 it. years, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Windows, these, you know, we, we were really surprised at the amount of rot in the windows. And one of them actually was in the food shelf itself, and I think it was because we were running an air conditioner to keep it cool. Um, but with the heat pumps that were part of this project installed, we don't have to have better 
that window air conditioner, so the windows that were replaced should be good for a long time. Um, so what is the number? I haven't added those up. What's the number come to that you've got on this? I think paper? it's a little over 6,000. Six, just shy of 66. Yeah, or 67, right? I don't know. Years, Jim? It's good use of our money for the return that we've gotten out of it recently. Mm -hmm. You guys are active over there. There's all this stuff going on. I think if you came to me and we didn't have the ARPA funds, I'd be a little harder. I mean, the original agreement, my understanding was the group was going to be in the I, I get what you're saying. It's still our building, but. That's worth getting. If, this was, if I had to go to the taxpayers and ask for another 10 grand to put into it, I'd be a little hesitant and say, let's you know, work on your grants or sharpen your pencil because we can only go so far. But with the ARPA money, I mean, if we don't spend it, they're going to take it back, penalize us or something. This is a good way to. I think we get enough projects to spend it on, but it just depends where you want to spend it. Yeah. How do you feel, Ron? I think the ARPA money would, would fit this. Mm -hmm. But I'd like, to, I'd like to see this. Is, is this the end of it, or is it more? I think, I mean, that's, I, you know, I invited you to come meet in the room. It's, it's incredible, you know, having this wall set up. It's a big space we've set up. The <coughs> there on Tuesday, twice, for two weeks in a row, and it's just, yeah, it's just, is the project complete though, or is it there's still a few odds and ends? Um, that the, this project is there's a kitchen renovation portion that's not um, complete um, that we're working on a plan for that. But in terms of what we conceived of, of the project, yes, yeah. So, so what we gave we gave the original money for that project. Yes. The yep. kitchen was part of the food Something. shelf. Different. Yeah, it'll be. It, you know, other grants funding. Um, you know, the food bank. I think some of the kids that. Yeah. Kathy, how does that fit in with uh, $6,708 is the total. And we have, I think, 400 I mean, so many thousands of dollars that we have to spend by 2025. Yeah, no, I know that, but uh, as far as the paperwork. Sounds like a lot of money, but we can spend that on a couple yeah, projects. That's yeah. So that's true. why. Yeah, it sounds big. We just gotta be cautious what we do. That's no, all I'm suggesting. Yeah. 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 So, in we, terms of the question, was see again. Um, technically, for the legal ARPA funding, this fits good. And the, what else would you need? Uh, well, I just need to create another contract and make sure that it's legally that it's in that legal legalese yeah. that had originally been framed. Yeah. So, we would call this um, capital. Projects number two for this particular for this particular piece. So that's going to meet your financial needs for quite a while, I hope. I would hope so. I mean, in terms of the building, the structure itself. And what's your thought? Do you put on the end of the check? This is all you get for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Just to give you a heads up. We put a lot of money over in that area this year on different projects. You know, there's going to be other people saying, "How come we don't do this stuff?" Just I mean, um, they're all worthy, it's just... Right. right, at some point you can't say yes to everything. Yeah, that comes you can't. To the table. It's yeah. just reality. So why don't you want to make a motion to use ARPA funds to fund... What's your thought? What do you, do you think we should say we've put... I think we spent a lot of money, but hey, it's, just, it's that money in ARPA. If people use it, I, I don't have a special project. I won't throw it at or anything. I know there's some things we're going to have to. You know, just like that white school, we you know, keep talking and done a thing with that. Mm -hmm. you know, there's a project on a pile of money. We're put it, yeah. So, you can go town clerk's office. I was looking at that the other day. I need some money spent on mm -hmm. it, too. So, but this gets used. I mean, that's... Yeah, you know, it's, like, mm -hmm. it's like the library, you know? I've got to see him come to us and ask for money to put the floor down because it's worn out from people walking and eating. Mm -hmm. Right, you can say what you want about 30 years ago saying, take this, but yeah. 
the other three buildings we have aren't hugely used and popular. So yeah. Right. So so basically the the uh, A two Z estimate mm -hmm. of July twenty second. Yeah. Or ten July. Yeah. And for instance, like ceilings. Five thousand bucks, forty nine seventy five. This is an example of the cost of the ceiling increase by nine hundred ninety five dollars. Yeah. And these, this is uh, these items were kind of an addition to this original quote. Right. Right. I'd like to make a motion that we cover the uh, unforeseen additional ex capital expenses that were incurred in the renovation of. The um, community center. I'm going to say the amount of seven. Using ARPA funds. Six thousand seven hundred eight dollars. Using. Okay, any other discussion on? <clears throat> oh, second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Can I set that up? I mean, I can. Don't yeah. come back again. <laughs> I, I can't promise. I'm here again. I can promise you the next time I'm going to be long more resistant. I'll come back again. Give you a heads up on it. I'll send somebody else. Yeah, you'll get the same answer from um, So, and I need some advice, too. Um, uh, we're organizing a Ben and Jerry's Community Action Team Work Day on Monday, November 1st. 21st? No, November 21st. Um, these are, I've worked with uh, the community action team twice for the town. One was at the common school when the school went back in. You know, we became the ceilings with them. And, I mean, it's it's really a an asset, you know, to have them come. And I worked at the Chester Park site with them. But they're going to come to the community center, and I have a we have a couple projects that I didn't know if the town could give us advice. We need some topsoil to smooth out the playground, and I don't know where. I could get like three buckets, three tractor buckets of topsoil. We used to, like, no, I won't tell you, what we used to get it. <laughs> Albert Tatry, Tatry used to provide us with yeah. topsoil. <laughs> uh, so I don't, is there? I don't know, this late in the year, I don't know whether you'd have to buy that commercially or not. Yeah. Because you usually just put it off the top and let it right. dry out. Right, you don't have piles of it anywhere. Um, the other thing is there will be a lot, some wood and construction materials that you know, need to be disposed of. And I don't know the best place for that. That pizza oven. And that wood oven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right there. Well, it's all on site. I don't think so. Rotten wood, rotten hemlock, and the screws and nails. Just well, from the those playground or whatnot? Mm -hmm. you, what? you take those out first. So no, no advice there. Just, just stuff from like the play, playhouse. And um, some is yeah, old play equipment. The others, the um, we'll take out a couple of garden beds, and then there's I don't know residual stuff from other projects. That's just random stuff that shows up in the corner. Yeah, I don't know you get a dumpster full. No. So, but maybe that's, that's the not. thing is just to get a construction dumpster, good drop off. Yeah, you have twenty yard dumps or small dumps for you. So twenty. 20 yards? Well, I don't know. 20 yards is huge for what you need. 20 yards, at least you get to the edge. When are you doing it? Next Monday. Um, and the other, one other project is maybe to cut a trail to the, um, the Black Creek for the youth cramps. And I'm not sure we're going to do this or not, but if there's any place for a brush disposal. Okay. Or should we just yeah. stack it and burn it? It's a natural wood property. You know, on, your, on your property? No, right where you own. That's town property. Uh -huh. No, I meant on there. I don't care. It's a natural thing. You can burn, right? Yeah. You're a fireman. You get a burn permit. Get a burn permit. Uh -huh. It's natural, natural wood. Have it's a not... fire. A little community celebration. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you may want to let it dry a little bit first. <laughs> not too much, though. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, You could go ahead and stack it if you get that crew to work. Stack up all that brush. Yeah. Fire in the middle of that 
Both you know, on your uh, top <laughs> on your topsoil, you got the dirt tech guys up there in your office, right? That's true. Just yeah. have them bring yeah. it over. To tell, tell them. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a really good, good idea. idea. They'll just they'll make them the pizza. Them. Yeah, well, that's what I'm. We're I'm hoping to have the pizza oven set up, and we'll do pizza at the end of the day. So if you're around around three o'clock on Monday. <laughs> okay. For pizza. Thanks for that suggestion. Yeah, I bet they got a disposal place too for the wood. I was just yeah, thinking that same thing. Getting rid of all those bridges and stuff. They must have a spot, so they yeah. probably take that stuff too. Yeah. If, if not, find, find somebody pizza. with a little dump trailer. Yeah, just that seems like it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't need to spend 500 bucks on a dumpster. Yeah, maybe I'll call Bob. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Well, thanks. 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 Are you making that on your gazebo? It's done. It's done. We're just waiting for the final. Oh, it is completed? Yeah. yeah. That's good. yeah. Congratulations. You're welcome. It, yeah, good. Good. It's it's good. it hasn't been an easy project, but <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, we're getting there. So, that's, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we should. Okay. I'm not sure where Lois. And I knew that um, Linda was not going to be here, so I have some information from Linda. Um, but I don't have anything from Mo. Well, let's go with what Linda's done. Okay. Um, so the taxes are still coming in. Uh, she's still waiting on postmark mail before knowing the total delinquent. Um, but she said that she's looking at a very similar story from last year. And um, she'll have that final, the final information for you at our next meeting. She also said, um, that oh, the tax sale notice is posted. I actually have copies for you if you want them. Um, it is scheduled for the 21st of December at 10 a.m. And I think that last meeting we had discussed the possibility of attending and maybe um, uh, putting a bid in. So I brought some information about how much money we have in the tax sale account and also how much uh, the taxes, what, how many, how, what is due, what is owed, um, if you wanted to discuss that. Um, you know, what, 15, 15, how do you do on it? Um, it's $1,929.74. And um, current from our last tax sale, the, the um, last house that was, when we did a tax sale, we, we received 8000 <coughs> Dollars and we have eight eight thousand twelve, the eight thousand and twelve dollars eighty eight dollars So there's a house on a piece of land that we've been talking about for two years. There's a house on a piece of land that the state owns. Right. Yeah. Is a building on a piece of land? Yeah, yeah. How did the building up there? Right. Why do we have any interest in it? The only reason we even suggested it was that we. This rail trail thing of parking and those kind of state things. owns the land. Oh, right. They're going to let the town tear the building down and use it probably. The law. They haven't got any money on that lot in years. Right. So it's up to you guys. That's why we bring this stuff up. You want to buy it for a dollar? I wouldn't pay a lot of money for it, no, because the impression I'm getting is full of junk. The town found it. Building. The problem with buying it is, is, is uh, demolishing it. Mm -hmm. That costs. That's going to cost some money too. Yeah. So even if you get a tax sale for a dollar, it's still going to cost you. It's still going to cost you. Yeah. What? And we still don't know that we have access to the land. The state of Vermont could say nope. You have spoken to the state of Vermont, right? So Linda took that because she had started having that conversation, and they said that they weren't going to do anything until the tax sale had finished, and then they would talk to us about what might be possible. Maybe we should start taxing the state because the building's on their property. I don't know how well, well, I, I can imagine how well that goes. Send them that and say, well, the other guy won't pay it and we can't buy it, so here's your, you guys get rid of the building then. Is there a lease on it? I think there must have been years ago because it was Purina Grain Company that was in there for a long, long time. Apparently, as the, as the 
real trail has been, or the trail has been going in the Moyle Valley real trail. Um, they've found some other properties in, in like Enosburg and other places that have been sort of hard to figure out. Similarly, um, combined, you know, state property, pro private, and, and tax issues, and so I think what I heard from them was, from the state, was that this, this is sort of um, antiquated dealing of how properties were arranged before, before we had all of these. So basically we, we want to quit chasing our tail about this delinquent taxes. We buy it for a dollar and say, We'll tear it down if you want. Give us access to it. Well, we leave it standing in the way it is and just yeah. say, do we do? We'll pay what the last guy did. Mm -hmm. For rent, nothing. Because I, I don't believe they paid, I don't think they paid the lease on that land for a long time. Yeah. Maybe on the floor. They gotta be at least, they gotta be something. There's gotta be something, but whether it was ever enforced, I guess that's what's Oh, it's probably, probably was never paid, but right. Right. never enforced. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I guarantee you there's a, there's a document on it somewhere. Somewhere, else. yeah. Yeah, because, there was an incident probably 15, 20 years ago where they wanted us to reopen that little roadway by Horace Riley's house. Yeah. And a couple of the citizens were insistent that could be done, couldn't find anything. Come find out, 1904 or 8, that Governor Smith and St. Adam's niece got killed on that railroad crossing in Horse and Buggy. And when they found a closure of that forever was in the uh, railroad, <coughs> St. John's Ferry and the Monroe County Railroad back, uh, history. It was an issue by whatever state agency was at that time. Right. But they closed it. It was forever closed. So we continue talking about it. We've been well, we got a month to figure out what we want to do. Right, right. But that's what I'm saying is yeah. if we don't just buy it, we're just going to continue having tax sales or talking about it for... And there may be some, as previous, they mentioned, there were some people that had an interest in the building after this real trade thing started moving. Right. If somebody see, outbids us at a dollar and one cent, they can buy up with it than us, I'll be honest with you. Especially if they won't pay something, then we can start taxing them on it. Getting some tax dollars out of it. But it's just stuff we ought, we need to keep an eye on that day, not 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 go. And then it goes through this BS again and didn't sell to anybody. I think that sounds like pretty I think that sounds pretty good. If there's someone else is interested, let them buy it. If it's not, we'll buy it for a buck and deal with it. Try to just negotiate with the state. Be nice if we could take a look to see how much junk is in there. That's what I've heard, rumor. And I knew the guy had stuff in there, then he died. This is the one right on the edge of White's. Yeah, that metal building right by the roadside. Yeah. The, the big building. building. Pretty good size. Right, right. pretty good size. This is the top floating dock on one yeah. on this end. Yeah. 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 Did you help Raymond take one of them down yeah. further? Yeah. Those blocks out of it? There. How are you gonna how are you gonna take how are you gonna handle it though? How are you gonna demolish it or take thumb on an excavator? It don't take long. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and that one, I don't know, that one's got enough beams, good beams and stuff, somebody might take it down for some of the structure in it. Because it was well built. It's hung up in the air for, I bet, 75, 80 years, anyway. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. there's another one down further, too. That, yeah, was car that carry Surf Co op. I think that's in the same lease. So I don't know if that's part of the same tax on this. It's called, well, it's high on, it's faded out, but it said Co op, carry Co op Surf Co we used to take surfing there years ago. And then they rolled it right on the trains. Carry Co-op Surf? Yeah. Carry Surf Co-op. Can, can we get a, can, is there a way to like look in the windows or legally, you know, tour the building before the? Well, we should find out that, see that Tom Fonda had leased it or rented it or something from Souls. He died probably two years ago. So I'm not sure how we get yeah, well, I, I think I think Dave had a pretty, I mean... Oh, I'd much rather see somebody... Someone buy it, great. If not, we'll buy it for a buck and negotiate. We'll have to deal with what we got to do. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Okay, so um, anything else about that? I would say we'll play it by ear till the 21st. We'll yeah. Keep ourselves informed or try to find out more about it. Okay. Um, so the town report uh, contract from Rico came... came um, and Linda wanted me to tell you a few things. One is Repro is very reliable. They have a track record with us and other local, uh, other regional um, municipalities for the, um, the town report. She, um, let's see, 
the other uh, option of messenger did not call her back prior to this meeting. Um, there was also some look into the Correctional Center um, printing uh, process, and they um, had a few, un based on her research, she found out that there were some unpredictable circumstances that caused problems with them in the past, the Correctional Center in the past, so that things were late, the timelines were delayed. Um, for example, COVID, that was a big one, but it, it's just a little bit precarious in the, in the facility for, for this kind of project timeline. So she would like the select board to um, consider this contract and uh, allow us to approve it. The 2022 reports for 650 copies for just one year is up $100 from last year. Um, but if we did two years, it would be closer to last year's cost. Enter into a two-year contract? Yeah, then? entering into a two-year contract. How many years do you, did she say how many years they've been doing it? Uh, she didn't actually tell me that. What year did we join that? Uh, oh, Maple Run. Is that three years ago? It's longer than that. Is it? Yeah. Because, you know, things half the size of what it used to be. Right. right. So. Right, there's not a lot in it anymore. So, what are you doing when you feel about this? I think she's correct with the reliability of it. We've always got it here. It seemed mm -hmm. there wasn't many corrections needed in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would you want to try the two year one, or would you? I think you should. I don't have any problem with that. So I'm thinking if it holds a cost, at least we know where we're operating from. Okay. So would someone that. make a motion to, do we need a motion on that or just um, business? I don't think so, as long as we have we're all in agreement on it. Yeah, we're in agreement. Okay. Um, so that's it for her. Uh, in terms of me, I had um, looked into the small, the small truck account you had discussed in the last meeting with Mo possibly buying a new um, truck and I saw that the balance is $27,971. Um, it has a 0.15% interest rate and it accrued $36 in interest this year. So that's just something to know. I'm not sure if we should talk about that more without Mo, but yeah. just want to follow up with that. I think you did ask get a name on the list. You know, the coming ones. They got one they were trying to push now. Also, they're not going to buy one this year that they want to be on the list, so that you got them in. <clears throat> so. He would like to definitely, yeah, he did mention that again to me. Just what about the raising the prices for plowing? While we talked? I looked into that as well, yeah. Okay. Didn't interrupt. Um, did you get an answer? Uh, so the, the school plowing rates, um, according to the two, the uh, superintendent's office, the National Association of Educational Procurement requires that any contract needs to go out to bid if there's an increase of more than 3.5%, which is like $5 on what we've been charging them. Tell them put it out That'd be good. Tell them put yeah, it out to bid. Yeah, I, well, so that's, I did my homework. I talked to the superintendent after that meeting for, yeah. where I was tasked, and he said, oh, I'm gonna work with Kathy and put together an MOU so a good outcome would be, that's good. you know, if it's, if it is, if yeah, they got to go. the town crew yeah. that we don't sure. do it. But sure. then we're going to be making up 20, 29,000, well, 30,000, so last, but you can back out your cost. Of doing last it. year was $6,540. Um, in 2021, it was $7,425. And we haven't increased our price since we started doing it. Once. Um, we did, actually. Once. I went back and looked. I didn't see um, no, so we went up on them. In 2019, 2020, Plus, the thanks. cost we charged them was $135 per plow and sand and $70 uh, for the, uh, just the salting, salt only. And then if we, if so then in 2021 and 2022, it was $150, but that's pretty small. But the cost is that much to do it. I was so, gonna say, you, well, either way, we've got to do the road through the middle. You do the road, but that's different than doing those whole parking lots. Right, but that's what I'm saying. 
135 is the big lot by the old fire station. The one down by the white school. The library. The, the, white, the white school is a road. Right, but they were going around front and back. I mean, that white school, you could just do the front in the wintertime. Right. And say going around the building. Yeah. You know. So you, you got half a loop around that, the big parking lot by the old fire station, and both parking areas on the mm -hmm. side, plus the school bus parking area. When we started with them, I think Scotty Greenwood. He was charging, that's a long time ago. He was charging them 100 or 115 mm -hmm. back then just to plow. Yeah. And they weren't getting the same. That's I, why they had a person get injured. They were asked, they were asked to flee to do it. That's how it started. I, I'm not opposed to doing it. It's, right. it. it's not a bad thing, but we got to be more realistic. I mean, I'm not saying we charge them an ass and a leg, but. 135 boxes. Be you interested can't to see what the other do you right. say on the sound and city play. They got bigger lots. You I mean you got to put them in proportion? You got right. bigger lots. But I, I would talk to Mo, come up with a number in the next, have something at the next meeting we can say this is what we're going to. Yeah, either we'll keep knowing it or we won't. Yeah, and, and we'll, we'll continue to do it until you put it out to bid, but yeah. we, we've got to cover our costs. I mean, salt is yeah. through yeah. the roof. You're not, right yeah. you're not even covering. Yeah. Um, and also, I did request that the that Maple Run send me they in their last select board or their last um, uh, police, the last school meeting they um, approved a three year uh, contract for the other schools um, with Gosselin Construction. So I requested that they give me the information on that contract, and I haven't seen it yet. But as soon as I know, way way higher than what we are. And it, it just will. I think it'll it, it'll be interesting to give us a, a sense of what they're. Pretty good way to get out and say if we don't hear from you, we won't be plowing it in snow for us. I think they'll probably get it. I mean, it's we're not. We're, yeah, we're not probably, but sometimes <laughs> you need to let them know we're serious yeah. about this. And it'll yeah. just slaughter. They're, they're not going to give you Goslin's bill. You don't give the competition. No, it's a, yeah, no, it's, it's a contract. It's approved contract. It's approved contract. That's yeah, probably yeah, yeah, That's not. In the last meeting. That's not private knowledge. That's that's I eat either the way. That's dirty. That's not the way you do business. Ask Mo how much material he uses to sand it. To I said it. you you got to go all apples to apples. There's nowhere near the same size. Yeah. You know, either you base it on square footage or something. You've got to come up with some formula. It's not hard to figure out how much material you use to cover it. How much time you take. You put a rate on your trucks. You know what you pay for your salt. Make twenty percent and move on. You're not. Same form would be based on that contract. If you see what the numbers are, which they're public knowledge, they're not some private. Mm -hmm. And do it by the square footage they're covering. The, There's got to be some formulation for that that you come up with. The federal reimbursable rate for just using a, a, a truck, which we use to get reimbursed by our grants, is $91.65 just to use the truck. That's not including materials. the materials that are being used. And if you're talking about the loader, it's $80.43. And this is per hour. Yeah. So that's the reimbursable rate for the, for the act, just the equipment. Yeah. But I can definitely touch base with um, Mo about hours and size. And size. Well, they must have. I mean, done enough years, they've got a pretty good idea how long yeah. it takes them, yeah. how much salt they use each time they do it. Um, so we are at a point with tax uh, tax collection where we should set, we should definitely pay off our loan, the tax anticipation loan. Um, so if we could get a motion to pay off the balance of the tax anticipation anticipation loan and interest uh, for the twenty twenty two year, that would be helpful, and then we won't be late as of. I think to it's the week after uh, our next meeting that it's due. We borrow five hundred. It was six hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. And we've had su sufficient tax revenue come in, so we're we're fine. Yeah. This is the so when we make that motion, you won't know exact number till the day you pay it, right? Uh, the bill, I believe, came in the mail today, so it, it's almost it's almost certain. It's not, I don't know the exact number, but you, if we right. just do the the principal plus the accumulated interest. interest. Will someone make that motion? Can you? Yeah, I'll make the motion to pay off the anticipated okay. tax loan. Someone second it? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, anybody opposed? 
All in favor? I think this is done. Um, well, the bridge, the Joueur Road Bridge is, full, is finished. Um, and we have invoices in our final invoice from St. Alge's in our um, book, in our AP this week. And in order for us to move forward with that specific um, final invoice, there were two change orders that took place this with this project that we didn't have the actual change order content for. Um, not the content, but the, the written piece of paper that requests that we, we as a group, um, St. Ange and, the, um, and Stantec and um, Tyler the, uh, did look at everything and analyze everything and approved everything. So there were two change orders. One was, um, let me just make sure that I give you the right information here. Uh, one was the wall height needed to change after the job was awarded. It, it was it had to be a little bit bigger, and um, the second change was a ledge abutment subfooting change, which we discussed. There was there was a ledge that needed that changed the scope of the subfooting or the the process they were They didn't have to go down so deep for the pilings, didn't they? That part of it. Uh, so the way it calculated for that second piece was the current, so there was original bid for flooring, of, of for footing, um, and then there were new drawings for footing and wall instead of, um, yeah, and then there was the footing and height uh, was shortened and the cost changes were in this contract, I mean in this schedule of prices. So, let me see, change order number one, installation of something. <laughs> Instead of this all organized, and I don't see how they organized on this deck. Can I look at the IP for this? Did we ever get in contact with that engineer that Randy was suggesting we start using minimal state? I can't remember his name now. Not yet, but we do need to do that for the North Road. Um, well, that's what I was thinking. It'd be a good yeah. time of year to contact the guy and yeah, get started the procedure. You remember, I can't remember his name. Yeah. Randy highly recommended him. It was another yeah. Tyler, a different, a different he works with, last Apparently time. works well with small towns and, and follows through. What's that? Find a, find a couple of references and check so we don't get stuck anymore. No, Randy, it's, someone else was talking. Some other town used to when they were talking to me about it. Who approves it? Change orders? Stand up. Stand up. It was the um, engineer from Ruggiano. That change order included a whole new, um, I mean, we had to, they had to create a whole new map and it had to be reviewed by the structural engineer and the um, the main engineer and then St. Ange had to also approve it from their, um, the people on the ground mm -hmm. and then Stantec also, the, um, Stantec the, has the final say as the administrator the of say. the project. And, and yeah, sure. we have Stantec. Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, I the new contract price, the current contract price adjusted with number one was, um, increased the cost by $1,285. And then the second, um, which was the, it says that the structural engineer changed the wall height after the job was awarded. That was, um, this increased it, increased um, by 9.58 cubic yards of concrete over what was originally in the bid documents. So that was an increase of $10,490. And this is how much FEMA 
this, as long as we don't go over 10%, they'll still reimburse us for the full amount that we, we um, full 90% of the entire uh, amount that we, we paid. And it looks like Stantec is going to be coming under pretty significantly. We have to, I have to go back, but I don't think they're going to, I think they're going to be like at least $15,000 under. So. so basically a wash? Is that what it you're seems like it's going to be a wash between the two contractors. Well, it's good it's up and done. It took a while, but. It did. Is that the last of that FEMA stuff we got off that storm? That's the last of it. And we need to get all of the information that Stantec, Stantec has compiled and all of the work that's required for FEMA in by December 31st. And Jonathan is going to work on me with that, well, on with that one. So I'm excited to get that up. Yeah. yeah, I'll get that. In major yes. priority. Yeah. Sooner the sooner the better. Well, December December first should be your deadline, not so. I agree. I mean I totally <laughs> don't push agree. it out. <laughs> yeah. I mean we have we have a few things coming up and that's priority. The other thing is that I need to get these bills paid before we can before I can start any of that. So I wanted to make sure. And these two change orders need to be signed by the municipality um, before we can pay that bill. Well, get it up so we can start signing. Okay. It's just. It's so just sign my our names under Mr. Powell. Yeah. Do you need everybody's signature or just one? You know, I, I'm not sure that I need everybody's signature. No, I don't think so. I think it was just one? Yeah, yeah. You, maybe you could say a quick motion to approve change orders number one and two for the St. Ange contractor. Did someone make that motion? Did we do that already? Mm -hmm. I will. So, you second it? Yeah, I second it. Okay. Anyone opposed? All in favor? All right, Thank you. Thank you. Um, the Emergency Communications and Dispatch Services of St. Al St. Albans City. Um, it, the contract came in, and the contract is actually for, um, it starts July 1st and it ends June 31st. So it started, it'll be starting next year. But they sent it to us, I think, for our budgeting purposes. Um, and it has increased by 5%, so uh, it's up from $23,004 uh, this year in July to $24,155 next year. Um, I am not certain who you used in the past to compare this to, uh, but I, have, I don't think we've had any problems with this contract yet. Um, what would you like me to do about that one? Don't know. It's a lot of competition on that thing, is it? That's dispatch. Just dispatch. It's dispatch and emergency. They service. usually send us a breakdown of per resident fees. But, but I was thinking, it seems like one time before we talked about it, but it the other one was over in the islands or something. I don't yeah, know. We don't. You don't really have much option. Yeah, I was going to say, the yeah. options are pretty limited. At 3 o'clock in the morning, you, you want somebody who at least lives in St. Albans. Yeah. Yes. So it's up $1,151 this year. <clears throat> and you can't expect anything to go down. Yeah, Joe said gas dropped. Did you hear it? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, I think we have to get this solved today. It's something that you wanted to consider for a little while. Yeah. I mean, what does the contract do? Not till. It's due as soon as we can get it to them, just so that everybody can be squared away. But right, but the money's not due till. The money's. Mm, 
Didn't you say the contract was from July? To yeah, the, the, the contract isn't, isn't due anytime soon. But it would be nice to, especially budget season coming up, know how to, to know how much we're going to pay. Do they give you a, a what? Kind of like how, how do you compare it? Or, I don't know. Yeah, that's, that was the question. I'm not. There's not a lot of choice. Mm -hmm. No, it's something we can talk about at another meeting. We'll have that number in our mind when we're doing the budget. Yeah, yeah and you could ask that question, you know. If, how does this compare? Well, how does it compare, or do we have a choice? Yeah. And if, if we do have a choice, what is it? And, you know, are other, are other towns exploring other options? Okay. Sounds like no, but it might be. Yeah, because see, didn't Roger uh, mold them off? He worked on getting that back together. They updated it and everything else before he came police chief in San Francisco. There's a, there's a lot going on in that venue right now with communications and dispatch. And... So what else we got? Um, so the in terms of banking, I just wanted to let you know that um, I did transfer the $38,956 from the paving CD to operating for the overage. Um, so the balance now is $26,670 in the paving CD. Um, I transferred $30,000 that was budgeted and approved by the voters last year um, to go to the capital fund CD. Um, so that balance now is $32,006. I transferred, there was a journal entry last year that was made um, to transfer the $110,000 from the calendar year 20 surplus. So this was actually a, it was on the uh, town meeting agenda to, to put this $110,000 into the equipment CD. It was approved by the voters. There was a journal entry made in Emmerich, but the actual money never got transferred. And we couldn't, when I discovered that midway through this year, we didn't have the money to transfer in because we hadn't raised taxes. Um, so I transferred the $110,000 to the equipment. Was that a surplus year. balance from the previous year you were supposed to transfer? That oh. was from calendar year 20 surplus. That was never transferred in 2021. So the money was raised. Yes. So yes. does the money get spent in general expenses through the year? Yes. Yeah. So that, but that money would have never been transferred into the, um, the fund. And I had mentioned this one, it was on the accounting that we did for the truck. So that you asked how much money was going to be left over once the truck was, was purchased, the 2023 um, international this year. It was in that accounting that it would, that was the first time that we, we that I mentioned it, um, but it, we couldn't make that transfer at the time. So at this point, the So at this point, if you get reimbursed for anything, is there anything going to be reimbursed? Uh, we have already received um, the reimbursement, $25,000 from the uh, grants and aid for Jouer Road, the, the, the other work that we did, not the bridge. Um, so that has come in. We're going to have another, yes, we have, we have more money coming in. And also there is um, all of the delinquent taxes that usually come in at the end. So, so we've gone through, through the voters first. I mean, the money should be put into that account. So I guess what we need to do is when we get closer to an end date, see what we actually got. So I, because it was legally voted by the voters and we are about a year late, a year and a half late almost on this, I made that transfer at maturity as soon as I knew that we had the taxes available for that. So what you're saying now is there's a hundred and... It's now the balance is $182,000 in the equipment, in the equipment fund. fund. And you're sure that money hadn't been util utilized possible. for an equipment purchase prior? What did we buy the year before? Bought the truck this year? Well, we bought yeah. that backhoe. Back yeah, <coughs> that was this year. 
we'll be by the year before. Is that the year we bought that international? Yeah, the 2021 truck. Yeah. I'm just curious if the 110 was... I, did, I talked to Jonathan about it, and I also looked at all of our accounting. I've been doing a lot of work on looking at how things, how money was managed last year, and how the transfers were made, and what we did, and what we need to do differently this year. So I'm 100% I'm positive that that money wasn't utilized and also didn't get transferred. Right, but I'm just saying for the, for the 2021 truck. Did 110 go from the surplus to the truck and never go into the general or the no. equipment? Okay. If you do a detailed transaction report, it wasn't there. Okay. But that money can up obviously in the next year. We have to pay off some things and we can definitely use it to, to lower the, the debt on those kinds of expenses. Well, I imagine we'll be looking at another piece of equipment or truck. If we're going to stay on a rotational basis, so. And, um, and then the only other thing was um, the CTO. We the last meeting you had asked me, we had talked a little bit about um, uh, taking time, a vacation time at the end mm -hmm. of a contract or uh, not uh, at the end of a personal year for personnel. Um, and one of the things that came up in that discussion was um, what is the overtime CTO policy? And I had mentioned that the personnel, that, that the um, policy is that nobody can take any more than 110 hours or <coughs> can't save more than 110 hours of, of CTO in a year. And there was a question about that. So I did look um, and on page 10 in the uh, personnel policy in section 28 on CTO, it does say that 110 hours is the amount that <coughs> is allowed to accrue. And that is 70, I think 72 hours of actual time. We calculate that um, time and a half before we put it into the computer at 110 total. So it's not 110. <coughs> plus time, plus half, it's 110 total. Um, so that, I just wanted to make sure that I got back around to that. And we didn't discuss um, any anything else on the personnel matter, matter that we went into executive session on last time. Um, so that would be something to consider if you wanted to go back in and talk about that. And then the last piece was the budget. I just we need to prepare for planning, uh, come up with a date that works for everybody for the next budget. Where are we at right now? Um, well, I mean, just I, my big question before we have the, the full conversation is I want to know, um, do you want me to put together a full budget? Is that what you're saying? You want me to put together a full budget for the next I think year? he's asking. No. Like, step. Oh. Where, where are we right now? Oh, in terms of current budget. We're doing fine. <coughs> just, just so. Yeah. So. Okay. So. The last year we did a kind of had a couple. We're at eighty-eight point six four percent. Where? Eighty-eight point six four percent. It's not bad considering. Yeah. And again, we didn't. Um, we didn't do a lot of the capital improvements, like ten thousand dollars here, ten thousand dollars there, for a lot of the buildings. Um, so we got a pinch penny somewhere really, sometimes. At the end of the day, changed a lot of the numbers. So my question for you, in terms of the budget, is specifically. Um, I know that in order to plan effectively, I need to compare insurance and make sure that I have the information for retirement, health insurance, debt retirement, all of the things with banking um, in order to kind of feed the conversation as much as, as you need. But I want to know from you what else, what, what questions do you need answered in order to make some of these, these decisions that need to happen for the budget in that budget planning session. I want to bring as much information. Yeah, this, you, this is going to be a multiple. This isn't a sit down once and it's over with. 
seems like we've done it for a couple different times. Yeah. Some years are simpler than others. Things aren't as crazy as it's been the last two years. You could almost say we're going to strive for a three or four, whatever. These years are a little different. But one thing I would like is I'd like you to get from the Vermont League in Cities and Town or the white, you know, the best sources available for the state of Vermont projected, you know, Franklin County cost of living increase or, you know, maybe a couple data points that would, you know, is a 3%, you know, starting point, you know, whatever the numbers, a couple different yeah. crystal balls so that when we kind of zero in on what we're projecting, yeah. we'd have some data. The, the insurance stuff is huge. We, insurance, I'm already working on that. So that's, we missed a lot of money last year on that. We had to yeah, get some quotes. Yeah, pass some questions out. And I'm, I'm getting that. Together. If you need something, bring it to us next meeting or call okay. us. If you, I mean, the insurance could be $50,000. If we need to stop in some night for a half hour and have a quick meeting about it. Okay. Right. We could do an evening meeting, yeah. just budgetary, just trying to yeah. get some numbers and don't to work with. Really? You got copies of that report? I do. I might, I might be able to yeah, give you so a better answer to your question. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. So this is where we are this year. And then next, uh, when we start this, I'll bring a different kind of... Why are we here during the budget process last oh, week? Oh, yeah. Okay. You just started, right? You sort of right around the same time as me. Um, yeah, so I'll bring that, that handy dandy comparative summary from last year to this year, and then there's a line on the way that report looks. Yeah, we'll want that next meeting probably, right? We ought to get started at it as soon as we can. We can have a decent agenda. It might next meeting might be nice just to walk through it and say. I'm gonna say you have a light agenda unless there's something major that comes up. Yeah. Just so we concentrate and start to look at numbers. Yeah. And It'd be good to go through it just once. Yeah. That'll okay. tell us where our questions are for you to track down. So right. you're not you know, you think a few years before the last one we had more fuel than we use. Of course, this year it's just the reverse. Right. So yeah. that's gonna throw things. Right. But if we take a half hour and go through it, that'll, yeah, this, that'll uh, give us some questions. So in December, we have yeah. some We do have for one it. person interested in coming to the next meeting. They went to the zoning board. Um, uh, Melissa, what was the group that just came to the zoning board at, the, at your last meeting? Do you remember? Which group are you? Well, that's what I'm trying to remember. I remember writing it on my planner, but for it, the it, next selection. That's fine. Meeting. I guess a visitor wants the to come Japanese in. Is not weed woman? No. Uh, maybe, actually, maybe. It was, the, it was about, um, I think it was about like, Lake Champlain. Yeah, so, they don't need to come now. Okay. So I will let them know that we're going to push them back. So, yeah, I mean, it, basically I'm just asking, because definitely it sounds like we're going to start the next meeting. I'll make sure that I have some, some information already entered into the spreadsheet that's going to look like a comparative summary from last year to this year and then align for next year. Um, and then I will make sure that I get the best sources of cost of living um, for the next meeting too. And if there's anything else in between now and then that you think would be helpful as you're looking through everything, please, please feel free to just email and let me know. Well, I guess, you know, one, one thing, being really clear on what the law of ARPA says, okay. you know, just, so I'm not looking for an answer, but I know we've discussed this in the past, but as we do our budget this year, any opportunity that is clearly within the law. It's absolutely because we made a motion. No, no, wait, I just, yeah, I just am saying, let's, let's really put our thinking cap on yeah. and any opportunity that's within the law that we can, you know, look at some of our expenditures that possibly we could use ARPA funds 
within the law. Yeah, and it, at least, you know, salt or, uh, you know, capital, capital or the truck or, you know, as, as we go to the budget, because that might help with, help our, you know, so there's cost of living, there's ARPA, there's, you know, salaries and, but I, th I, th I think that's one, some flexibility that we might have or something that would be a good thing to consider as we put together next year's budget. I don't think we should use the ARPA funds to try to reduce the budget. I, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm saying as we prepare their budget, let's look, understand, let's really know what the law says yeah. and let's look at our expenditures. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Do you have anything more? That's it, other than the deciding about if you want to go into those ideas. We said two things though. First, we have oh, yeah. a motion to accept the warrants. Make a motion we accept the warrants. Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Uh, I'll make a motion we accept the minutes. Okay, somebody second that? Second. Is there any discussion or things you want to question about these before we accept them? I got a few I just wanted to wonder if we got the answers to. Was the law scraping up at the pond, around the pond in the building? I talked to Randy. Oh, yeah. I actually texted him. He, uh, he said he didn't think we needed any kind of engineering study to do that. Just to change the angle. Yeah. yeah. I looked at it tonight. They, we, we don't get to pay anybody to take it off. No. Oh, so there's not much left. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. So, okay, that one takes care of that one I had. And Linda was, you know, suggesting outside assessors. To, she ever got a number out of uh, I doubt she would have left that off her agenda. So, okay. um, back to the, stri back back to the striping. We're not doing the striping until spring. Right. Yeah, that's right. spring. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll, we'll revise, if you want to do this, the change, we can revise that. Yeah. That's something that we should, you know, Linda's talked about this for a couple, you know, at least last year and now yeah. this year. And that, that would have, there's got to be, that's a war, you know, a, Kind of, well, it's a thing is, I think, maybe I'm mistaken, but I think we have to uh, have it on the uh, ballot for town meeting, bring it up for discussion, mm -hmm. r rationale and reasons why, mm -hmm. and of course, cause. Right. But I think the biggest thing is you're just not getting people coming forward like you used to be listers, and there's such a knowledge base to it, to, to be fair and equitable all around. But, so somebody doesn't say, Joe Bonan got a better assessment than I got. And, yeah. Well, would it be appropriate to, with that, feed to Kathy to feed to Linda that says, "Hey, let's let's move in that direction yeah, about preparing." To, you know, we'd like to be thinking about this. We tell them number. We need numbers. You know, mm -hmm. and, uh, then I know I've asked James on the I don't think how crazy he is about it, but I don't know how crazy he's about doing the job either. So it's. Yeah. You know, I'd like to see it done that way because it would be fair. Oh well. As I said, if you're going to try to get a couple million dollars out of local taxes, you're going to have to spend some money to do it. Yeah. You know, so I don't think cheaping out on getting it done is the best no. use of not spending money. You know, that's my opinion. You know, but. So, minutes. Are there any other discussions on minutes or anything? If there isn't. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody in favor? Aye. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, so, we want to go into executive session for. That's up to you. Yeah, there was another thing I wanted to bring up too that wouldn't be a decision, but just brought up for knowledge. So, before we do that, I just want to clarify. I just want to say one thing. You know, when I was talking on a, to the Zoom, I wasn't upset. I wasn't no. angry. I was trying to be courteous. So don't. I, I, no, I just. No, I just want to say no. You limited the conversation. You implied it was because somebody was getting angry, and it wasn't the case. Okay. It was a Zoom meeting, and I was trying to project. And I was trying to be courteous, and I was trying to give him information that he 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 doesn't live here. He made a statement that you can't see the pond from the site, and he said you can't see. You know, I live here. I'm on the pond. I was trying to give him heads up that people are going to expect it's a public. I'm speaking as the president of the pond association. Yeah. It's a public body of water. You can see the turbines from the water. Him not having a boat or not going to the shoreline where you can see is not gonna cut it. So I was trying to give him a heads up. No, and I, I wasn't necessarily implying people in the room. He had a 
very bad view of the room because we apparently the camera wasn't working. Well, Whatever. Surprised why? And in these kind of meetings, I'd rather have the person here talking to him. This yeah. Bull he, here can't see graphs or charts was, or god darn thing. Yeah. Uh, to he, me, that was BS. He didn't know how to present. He didn't know how to talk to people. I just it, it wasn't the forum for where that discussion was going. So I didn't think it was particularly informative the way it was done. No. You know, so we probably don't have final say on any of it anyway, other than the last time I think because it's going for a lawsuit thing for, for that other bunch. So I think during the com and I, I asked him for the information about um, his timeline because I believe that when when the when the permitting goes through, before it goes through, they will read through all of the comments, the minutes, the documents, the questions to determine whether or not it's an approvable project, as well as all of the information um, that has been provided about, the, about it. Um, so, you know, as soon as we know the timeline, we'll, I'll bring that in and I'll let you know if there's a way that we can make a comment. Well, so the PUC is gonna go, and as I told, yeah. David, this is a long process. Yeah. Yeah. In the PUC, the town of Fairfield has party status. Yes. Regional planning has party status. Right. So, you know, the, the quite, your, your question is appropriate, but we do have status as a town. And I guess I was thinking when he was talking about this balloon, I'm thinking, why wouldn't you let people know that they were going to be doing that? Yeah. So other people could observe it, whether they rightly or wrongly think it's going to affect their line of vision or whatever the hell it is, but if they're all aware of it at the same time, then you're all looking at it at the same time. Yeah. You, know. you want a motion to go in executive session? Yep. For, 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 for personnel? personnel. Yep. Yep.